Yo, what's going on, Epic7? I'm Sue, and this is my beginner's guide to Abyss Floor 100. Floor 100 will have you squaring off against Apocalypse Rabi. The first phase of the fight, she'll summon an Onyx Wyvern and tag herself out. It is just a raw DPS check. If you don't have good damage dealers, you're going to have a really rough time with this fight. So you can't really stall for souls and use things like Arky. You can't really use Kira's Poison. That does not work here. You must have real damage dealers on this fight, or you are in for a very rough time. Also, the second phase of the fight, she will spawn adds and you have to fight her herself. Whenever you land a non-critical hit on Apocalypse Ravi, she will gain a stack of her passive. At five stacks, she will gain continuous healing for herself as well as all of her allies. You must have a way to actually strip this buff. If you do not, she will heal back up to full. And also, she gains critical hit resistance throughout the fight. So the plan of getting to 100% critical hit chance on all of your characters, that kind of goes out the window, right? They basically want you to have ways to remove buffs from Apocalypse Ravi throughout the fight, or you will have a very rough time. Let's talk about the team that I'm going to use for Abyss 100. First up, the best Abyss tank in the game, Adventurer Raz. Aureus for the artifact, speed for the boots, health percentage for the ring, health percentage here for the necklace, over 65% plus effectiveness would be great because of the fact that we need it in order to actually remove buffs with his basic attack skill, X Slash. You could also use Falcon or Clurry with pretty much the same idea, at least over 65% effectiveness is fine. Next here is going to be Tamarin as our healer, best PvE healer in the entire game. Make sure you have your skills leveled up on Song of the Forest and Shining Star appropriately. Wondrous Potion Vial to deal with Blind on the first floor, as well as other debuffs throughout the fight. Speed on the boots, health percentage on the ring, health percentage on the necklace. Ideally, effectiveness, having some would be good. If you could have like 60 or 65 plus like Roz, that would be great because in case you forgot, her S1 wall in idle form is also a way to remove buffs, which will come in handy versus Robbie. First damage dealer I'm deciding to go with is Mercedes. Having some AoE damage is nice, and having the extra attack buff on Blazing Eye of Cal is also nice for that third phase. Similar story here. Speed on the boots. Attack percentage, because she's a DPS here on the ring. And critical hit damage here on the necklace. Since it's Mercedes, the only thing we're ever going to play is Magic for Friends. If you could get some effectiveness, by the way, on her, that would be okay, but is not necessary. Do remember that Dimensional Rupture also removes buffs. That's one of the other reasons we're playing Mercedes for this fight. And then finally, our main girl, our main damage dealer, Commander Lorena. We've been using her for most of these Abyss runs throughout this series. You already know, one of the strongest single target DPS in the entire game. I'm on attack percentage on the boots, attack percentage on the ring, and critical hit damage here on the necklace. Daydream Joker as the artifact. All right, now that you understand what the team is and you kind of have an idea of what the mechanics are, let's go through the fight together and kind of explain all the little intricacies. All right, so eyes. Blind Eye Lich is up first, and unlike other Abyss Floors, do not go after the adds. If you read his passive here from Blind Eye Lich, Cost of Sacrifice, when an ally except for the caster dies... He basically gets access to his ultimate immediately. It fully charges, and he gets 50% combat raise. If you read the ultimate, Call of the Dead, attacks the enemy dealing 99% of their health and making them unhealable for one turn. Call of the Dead basically just kills your whole team. So if you kill any of these, you die. Now, you could think, oh, maybe I just stall, but these mushrooms explode and do a ton of damage, so you die. This whole floor is designed as a damage check. You have to kill the Lich as fast as possible, or you are dead. I'll protect you. So we're going to S3 here at Raz to get defense buff to kind of resist up from the incidental chip here. We'll call here. Obey me. Obey me. All right, we break through here because, again, we need to just generate souls and deal as much damage as fast as we possibly can. Even though Roz is blinded, we have 10 souls. We want a soul burn. We got to go fast. Soul burn here to heal up Lorena. Basic here. 
Command me. S2 for the damage. Obey me. Obey me. I... As you can see, I pretty much only have one turn left to kill everything before the mushrooms explode. Not a lot of time, so we're going to skill two here. Lorena here. And then Mercedes to kill right before we die. Again, it's a really tight window. You got to make sure you have enough damage. If you don't have enough damage, you're going to have to find a, a way to kind of get better gear, kind of move things around. Otherwise, you're going to have to farm. Now, here we are on Apocalypse Robbie's floor. And at the start of her turn, she is going to use the Wyvern. They give you like a grace period here for a second to kind of use your non-attack skills to prepare. And now you have to fight this Wyvern. At 70 and 40% health, he will initiate a AoE counter that will give him a barrier. You have to break the barrier, otherwise you wipe. Again, it's another damage check. So we're going to use our attack buff on Cal. Blaze. My spear will protect everyone. I'm scared. We can idle here. To my Ladies and gentlemen, let's shine. Get started. No destiny. Get the souls as well as the defense buff here. The spirit of a commander. We'll hold breakthrough because we're about to push phase here. So we're gonna go S2, and this should push to our first phase. Obey me. And now we have to make sure we get this barrier down. So let's break through. I'll protect you. Ross Solburn. Alright, so we're out of the barrier phase. Arena just does massive damage there. We can soul burn again. Alright, so we call here, get rid of her skill nullifier. And now we move into the next phase. Same thing. Break down the barrier as fast as we can. Soul burn Ross. I'm ready. I will continue my training. I'm scared. Heal up here on Tamarin. And then we can use dimensional rupture to push to the next phase, most likely. Obey me. Nope, just a bit shy. Obey me. I'll protect you. Alright, we can skill three here. Does not back down. Hmm, no, we can just go one here. Push. Alright, and now we're here with Robbie. Now, I don't see a reason to kill these ads because at 70%, they just go away and get replaced with stronger ads. And if you kill them, they just revive. So who cares? So I'm just going to blitz Apocalypse Robbie as fast as I can here at the start. Ladies and gentlemen. Now watch as I hit this, you'll see that I gain a stack if I don't land a critical hit. Ooh, sadly we crit. So I can't show that. We can break through here. Alright, now hopefully this doesn't crit so you can see. So we gained a stack of War God's Might. Remember, at 5, we'll gain that continuous healing buff. Alright, so here is... A critical hit resistance buff, which is obviously going to help stack that up. We're still going to Cal anyway. We want the attack buff. Didn't crit, so there's two stacks. With Roz, we're going to S1 to see if we can remove it. Sadly, we're not able to. There's the continuous healing, so we have to strip that if at all possible. Command me. Okay. See? Strip the boss with Mercedes. Okay. Now we don't have to worry about that healing on Ravi. I'm scared. We don't have to worry about basically all of our hard work being undone right away. The order of the shield does not back down. <laughs> Obey me. Obey me. All right. Let's do this. Let's get our defense drop off. I think that's more important considering we're about to go into a Robbie's ult here. I, I think I'm going to 
Since I don't want to risk critting at her or getting a non-crit, I'm just going to attack one of these ads. Mercedes, preparation complete. Stop bothering me. Perish. All right, and then we'll have idle here again. Get our attack buff up. I will release my power. Lucky strip. We can go for breakthrough here. If I must fight. And then soul burn here. Now they'll disappear. And she'll summon the stronger adds. So that ad will silence Lorena. And that ad is going to put on Buffalo and Roz. So in order to get the silence off, we have to kill the purple one. And then we have to kill the yellow one to get the unbuffable off here. So let's focus on killing the purple one so we can get back Spiral Breakthrough for Lorena here. We can go S2 here because we already have attack buff. Soul burn here. All right, now I have access to Spiral Breakthrough again. All right, so we can go... Cal, just for the AoE. Should we get started? No reason to S3, because he can't actually receive his own defense buff. So we get that out of there. The order of the shield does not back down. All right, let's do this. So let's S1. We want to get rid of this. Help. Sadly, she got the continuous healing. And as you can see, it undid all the damage that we've done thus far, which is why it's super annoying. You want to make sure you could strip it if at all possible. You can't close your eyes. Go away. That said, now that the ads are kind of gone, every time she gets her skill 3, she'll revive one of them. As long as we stay on top of it, we just basically have to focus her down. It should be pretty easy for the most part. If you kind of got to this point where it's pretty stable, it's just a matter of time before you win. Obey me. Obey me. The spirit of a commander. I'll protect you. I hope you're ready. Let us fight together. I will continue my training. A defense break helps us do big damage here. Sadly, she kind of healed it up because she got hit by a non-critical hit. Obey me. The spirit of a commander. Start working down the other ad. If I must fight. Take this! Let's fight together. Command me. Call. Unveil your eye of terror. Ooh, didn't land a critical hit there. Punish you myself. The order of the shield does not back out with me. I'll protect you. Try to strip here. You can't close your eyes. Call. Mercedes. Preparation complete. My spear will protect everyone. I'm actually going to save Spiral Breakthrough for when I get a good window on a defense break. Should we get started? Hopefully this is it. I'm ready. The spirit of a commander. I'm scared. Go away. Command me. Obey me. Obey me. All right. Let's do this. Take this. There we go. There's the window I've been waiting for, and I can soul burn breakthrough for big damage. The order of the shield does not back down. You can't close your eyes. We can idle here. You can see we're just getting massive amounts of damage to come out here. I will release my power. Beyond the abyss. And we can soul burn with Roz. Alright, 
Since Robbie's so low, we can kind of just focus her down at this point and just take her out. Ooh, continuous healing. No. All right. Well, no matter what I do here, I'm going to end up hitting Robbie. If I must fight. No destiny. I don't have the soul, so in case I kind of miss here, I don't want to risk it. Alright, let's focus on the ad before things kind of get away from us too much. Robbie's one away from getting continuous healing here. The order of the shield does not back down. There's the healing. Can't close your eyes. Go away. I will release my power. As you can see, this is really annoying. I'll protect you. All right, now we have enough souls where we can kind of kill this. Alright, hopefully this idle rotation puts it away. Defense break should end here. And there we go. Took a little bit longer than I expected, but there is Abyss Floor 100 in a nutshell. You've cleared the first 100 floors of Abyss now, which means there's only 20 more to go, as well as the Abyss Challenge Mode floors after that. I have to warn you though, from here on out, from 101 and up, it's going to get a lot harder, and you might start to see in these guides some characters and some artifacts that might be things you have to get from the gotcha. We'll see how it is. I will try my best to develop strategies that use as many free to play characters and gear and artifacts as possible. But some of the floors that we're about to go into like Abyss 102, 105, 109 and 115, they are very difficult. They are late game content. So even if you're a newer player, again, I'll try to make it as accessible for you as possible. But there is a chance, just know, that some strategies may require characters that are a bit difficult to unlock, such as Savior Auden, or might re require specific five-star characters or artifacts. Again, hopefully this so far has been helpful to you. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comment section below. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll see you in Abyss 4101. Later now.